everyone, it's Lori from Girls in the Garden, and I'm here to chat with you on Facebook Live about In the Hoop projects on our MySoNet software. If you're not familiar with me, I've been sewing forever. You can find me on my blog at girlsinthegarden.net, or you can find me on Instagram, where I'm pretty active, at girlsinthegarden.sews, S-E-W-S. So let's start today with talking about In the Hoop projects. I'm going to show you three examples that I have stitched out for presents or different items. We'll talk about that for a little bit, and then we'll talk about where you can find them and how we're going to do it. But my thought today was in the hoop projects. You always hear Christmas in July, and we're almost to the end of July. But what a better way to start on a Christmas projects or holiday gifts or birthday presents is now. And when I'm doing in the hoop projects, I also do something at the same time. Maybe I do a lot of garment sewing, so I'm cutting out a pattern or adjusting a pattern. Or if you're a quilter, you could be trimming half square triangles, something like that, because machine's doing it all for you while you're embroidering, and you can kind of multitask. I even cook dinner sometimes while it's working. But let's look at the projects that I have stitched out. Oops, sorry. And this is my pouches. You can find zipper pouches in the In the Hoop projects. And every In the Hoop project has multiple ways to do it. Some provided, some that you can work on yourself. This one, um, I used the vintage sewing machine and added um, the uh, monogram to each of my person that was receiving the presents, initials. And then I have also done I can find my mouse, the keychain, and that was stitched on vinyl, and I just used a blank round one, and then I had a granddaughter who really wanted her back name on her backpack, but the backpack was a little bitty because she was just two, so I used the luggage tag, and I stitched the embroidery out. I embroidered her name, and I used cork for that, which is a wonderful item to use for our embroideries. So let's talk about where we can find this. If you go to your MySoNet software, you can find it in two ways. You can go to the Create tab over here to Projects in the Hoop. And they say you use Project in the Hoop Wizard to create an in the hoop design using your choice of project type, style, and dimensions. Or you can find, find it on this, the very first page, and you can find it right here. We'll go to that one. So it's going to pop up what we can do in categories. And we'll go through each category a little bit so you can see. So you've got a book cover and you enter the dimensions of your book and then it customizes it to just what you want. So you can pick several of these different things and you can do a blank one like that or a big title and you can add the title. But one of the, all of this is great in my Sonet, all the things you can do. But what I appreciate greatly is you can view on each project the PDF instructions. And let me slide those over. And it will tell you how to do it. So, sorry, I couldn't get slid over. But it'll tell you exactly how to do it and um, when you need to do certain things in each one. So... But we'll go on from here and look at the other things. So make sure whenever you do it, you can view the instructions on your laptop or, or phone or wherever you're looking at them, or you can print them off. So let's go to a card holder is another thing you can do. Once again, multiple ways to do it. Uh, then Christmas ornaments. What better way for Christmas in July than to start your Christmas ornaments? And... And also, anytime you have questions during this, just submit them, and I'll, if I know the answer, I'll tell you. If not, I will ask someone else to get the answer. Key ring, which I just did and showed you the example, and I used the blank circle. Uh, luggage tag, that was what I was talking about when I put my granddaughter's name on it. And there's lots of examples there. And novelty, just different animals like cartoon hearts, doggy a kitty things like that passport cover pencil case 
that'd be a good back to school item. So lots of kids going back to school. Phone case and then pouches. So let's start with that pouch. So you could pick one that had a camera, a floppy disk. Some people might not know what that is. Um, the sewing machine, so you could have more modern sewing machine, but I really liked the vintage machine. So I went with the vintage machine, and I'm gonna have to change my hoop when I get in here because I have the smaller hoop, but we'll open this up. And let me change my hoop. Okay, so there's my hoop. And once you notice over here on the left in our film strip, so when you do this design, it, and the instructions are gonna tell you exactly how to do it, you're going to have steps and, and you do need to look at those PDF instructions and it'll tell you exactly how to stitch it. But we wanna make sure this number two is always the last thing because that's when it closes it up. But what I enjoyed doing for my friends was to add a monogram. I just thought it made it a little more personal personable. So let's go to express monograms. And here we go. So I went ahead and put my initials in there, but let's say I'm making it for another friend and I can change those initials. So let's put those in and I didn't capitalize them, so we get lowercase. But you can pick how you want it, and we can make those bigger. So we're going to go that way, and we're going to finish. And then I'm going to slide it in here and put it in that empty spot. Because if you can notice, one of it has the stipple stitch all throughout it. But this one, move this out of the way, does not have the stipple stitch. So that's where I chose to do it. And you could probably do it on top of it and have your monogram on both sides. So I'll move it up here but I need to rotate this. So I'm going to rotate it to where it is just right in the hoop like that. So I have my monogram there. You can change your colors on the side if you want. Today I'm not going to do that because so we're, we're doing other things. But the most important thing to do is we need to move this up over here and then it doesn't close it up before you do the monograms. Because if you did not move it in the film strip right here where I did, you're going to stitch your pouch closed according to the PDF instructions, and then it's going to monogram your initials. But no worries. If you do do that by mistake and send it to your machine and realize you did it, ask me how I know. You just have to jump ahead while you're stitching it out. Stitch the last. Um, stitch your monogram. Go back. So we can save this one now and um, then go back. And I didn't, you know, each time you do a different monogram, you'll have to set it up differently. But that's a great way to do it. And um, then you can stitch it out. And like I said, while you're doing other projects, you can do that too. So let's get a new project. And we're going to do another project in the hoop. And I don't want to change the things. So, all right, we're going to do a key ring. So let's go down to the key ring. And I want to go to blank circle. So I'm going to hit OK. We don't need it that big. You can leave that hoop, hoop, hoop like you want it or you can go down to 120 on 120, and I'm just gonna do that so we can see it a little better. So, all right, there's our hoop. And I want to do a circle of hearts around it. So I am in Create, and I am going to Word Sculpt. And in Word Sculpt, we can pick lots of designs and shapes. So I'm going to go with the circle because our key ring is a circle. So let's go down to shapes. And I'm going to pick a circle. And we need to go to the same size as what we are. So I'm going to go about 43 is what I did on my notes so I knew what size it is. And the proportion button is clicked. 
so it keeps my circle in proportion. But I am going to change my stitch type, and it defaults to stars, but I can click Options, and you can go to any one of these different uh, first group and then to categories. I'm going to leave it in Universal, and I am going to go with the pattern, or we can go to Geometric and get our heart. I did it wrong. Let's hit cancel. We'll go back to stitch type because we have the stars. And hit options. And it's in general mo motifs. Sorry. I got myself flustered by getting off of here. So anyway, I've got my heart and look what it does. It's pretty, isn't it? It just makes a shape. You can tell it's hearts, but yet it looks like uh, points of a flower. So I'm going to hit next. Now, we can, since our key ring is small, it's better just to do one word or one letter. Now, if you had a bigger object, you could do multiple words and would scatter it around in this section. But I'm just going to put my first initial. So I'm going to do capital L. And I'm going to use, click the box right here because you can choose uppercase or lowercase only. And I'm going to use only once and do uppercase. Now you can select a font. I don't want to do random font. So I'm going to select uh, a font and um, drop down and I'm going to go to the script and I am going to pick on mine I did um, a Stella I think it was let's look and see yeah right here so there is my L and that's all I'm going to do I can maybe fit my name in there but I'm going to leave it with the L so I'm going to hit finish and then move this right in here. So look at that. So that looks pretty good. Now what I could do is if I wanted to move that L a little bit, I could right click and ungroup this. I'm not going to do it today, but if you didn't like where that position with that L was, or you just wanted to move it around for fun, you could hit ungroup. Now one thing we need to do again right here, we need to ungroup that um, keychain because when you read the instructions for the vinyl or whatever you're going to do the last step after you stitch out what design you wanted is putting another piece behind your top of what you stitch so it makes it pretty on the back and um, since we are going to add something I needed to ungroup that keychain and then move this up here so now my keychain will stitch out in the right order all the way through and stitch that just like we need it. So you have that design, you can be done with it, or you can play around it with some more. You could do another word, word sculpt, maybe say this first time, we did the circle of these hearts, and then we maybe did another small design around the middle before we en entered that L. Let's try that real quick. We have plenty of time. Let's delete that. All right, let's go back to word sculpt. And let's go to, we've got it in our, in our circle, we're going to go 43, and we'll just leave it in the stars for this time since it's up. Next, and then I'm going to get rid of the L, and we're going to finish. All right, so we've got our stars. Now, you could put a design in here if you wanted, or you could just leave it like this, and let's go to Word Sculpt one more time. And let's leave our circle. Let's make it smaller. Let's try 30. Now this is trial, trial and error. We'll pick another stitch. Now let's see what would go good with stars. How about another star? So we have that design. Now we can go next. I can enter my L. And we have a kind of um, a layered effect. So let's hit finish. Pull this in where we need it. And it looks pretty good. The stars kind of kind of touch. And you can use your um, arrow keys on your keyboard to move this slight 
ways left and right. And that way, you know, sometimes it's hard to get it just where you want it when you are using your mouse. So there is our design with, we really filled up that keychain. But remember, we're going to have to move that up and we're going to have to move this up. And while we're doing that, let's ungroup this. And I'm going to click on that L and I'm going to move it just a little bit. Here, I'll use my, there we go. So I can move it just a little bit so I could get it more centered. And I think it probably was centered exactly where the software wanted to. It's just the perception of the way the L looks for us. So and once again, if you have any questions or if I need to repeat something, please let me know. All right, so we have this all done. I'm gonna take a drink, just a minute. Now let's go to that luggage tag. So let's do file project in the hoop. I don't want to save the changes. Let's go to the luggage tag. And then I'm going to do a blank rectangle, but let's look at the blank rounded. See the corners are rounded on that one. I'll pull it up. Okay, let me switch my hoop back. Okay, so there's rounded, and we can go with this for the example today. Now, we, I just went to the lettering and put her name in. So you can take what we'll put in Hallie today. And when it's a little kid, I always love to use that kid font. I just think it's so cute and just seems appropriate for them. So or you could do any number. We have our choices are amazing, aren't they? But here's this kid's font. And I am going to keep it a little bit bigger than 10 because we can go from 10 to 50 as suggested by this font. And let's see, we'll try 25. That might be too big. Nope, let's rotate it. And you can rotate it with the arrow, but I like to use this way and then I keep it straight. So there it is. Simple as that, but we could add a couple hearts or we could ungroup or actually what we could do is leave a space like I could do H and then then, type, then not put A in and then L-L-I-E and I could always do a heart for Hallie in the middle. We could do things like that. Um, let's ungroup this one. Same way, you're going to want to move that down and um, finish it up that way. So let's try one more thing with Hallie. And then I've got an idea for a coaster I want to share with you too. So let's talk about how I did that lettering. So just type our H in. And then we're going to type our LIE. We've got these parts, and now we're going to go to Super Design, and we're going to go to, um, we can just search hearts up here. And let's just take that one, and we're going to go to 25. That's what the font was we used, but we'll see how it compares to with the lettering. Sometimes you have to go smaller. Nope, that looks good. So I'm going to bring all this down and go here and rotate it so I can get it right in line. Rotate my heart. And then rotate the rest of Hallie. All right. So there we have it all there. Once again, we need to move these elements up to where it stitches the correct way. And um, just remember to print those PDF or look at the PDF instructions so you know what order to sew things and stitch it out. And also very helpful with ideas on how to lay the zippers out for those pouches and things like that. So there we go. We could save this one. We could preview it up here. Or we could see the stitch out. We'll look, do the preview. There it is. It looks good. And um, it will stitch out beautifully. Plus, everybody have their own personalized back. Pack. All right. My idea with coasters was to use the spirograph um, option in here. So let's go to coasters. So we're going to go file new and new project in the hoop. 
no, I don't want to save this. So we'll go to coasters. And they are round ones. But let's do a hexagon blank. All right, let's change our hoop down to smaller just so we can see. All right, so there's our hexagon. And once again, we could put, word, use the word script and add, um, if you're doing this as a hostess gift or a Christmas gift, you could put um, the uh, receiver's initials in it or last first, first letter of their last name. Or you could um, do it, like I said earlier, and do the spirograph. Now let me move this over so you can see. Now you can just do random. And what I did here, let's move this over to the side real quick. You can kind of, I mean, these are each 10. So if you want to very quickly count by 10, so you know your size. So I'm going to go one, two, three. We're going to do about 60 by 60 when we do it and see how it fits in there. So you can just do random. Yes, I know I'm going to use the changes, but this is the way I can find them the way I like to look. Then you could play with the number of petals left and right where it doesn't have very many or has several. And it just makes it change quite a bit in there. So it's fun to play with all the time. So let's get this down just a little bit because I want to leave an opening in the middle. OK, so I know this is OK. And I want to make my size smaller. So let's go 60 in there. And we'll hit OK. So that's a little too big. but. For purposes today, we'll go back in and do it one more time. We'll go to about 40. All right, made that a little small, but we'll get the idea for today. So there this is. Now you can still do your uh, monogram in there. I'm going to just do one letter. So let's just do go down to our choices. We're just going to do one letter and we're going to let that be V. And you can hit finish. That's a little big. Let's try it one more time. Monogram V and we are going to go with this look. Finish and it fits right in there. We can make it a little smaller and put it in there. So there's lots of options today with what you're doing with your um, coasters or any in the hoop project. Once again, let's look at here because you can tell there's two steps in here. It says to the, to the left of that. So we're going to ungroup and we're going to move that one to the bottom. Oops. There we go. And that way, you know, you're going to make it pretty on the bottom again. And you always want it to look just right. So it's going to stitch the first part, like it says, to lay out the foundation. And then you're going to do your spirograph and then your monogram and then seal it up. So that's how it works. Let's try one more thing. Let's do another um, coaster. And let's do that hexagon blank again. All right. Let's go into um, word sculpt. And let's look for a shape that is similar to what we have in here. So we've got see if we can find one just like this. All right. And now let's make it smaller. Let's make it 40. And pick a design. A 
let's just say hello in it. In fact, oh, it's too big. Let's just put H for somebody's initial. And then finish. So we have that inside of there. And once again, we could do multiple rows around it. I want to show you that word sculpt with um, multiple letters or words. So we'll do it bigger just so you get the idea. So we're going to pick that and let's do 100 and pick a different stitch. I thought the ladybugs were cute. We'll do a ladybug. All right, we're going to say hello, hi, good morning. Let's do hello and hi. So they're going to put it in there. We can change our font and we can hit finish. So it's a little too big, but for today's purposes, you understand how that works. Let me delete it. All right, one more time on one more thing and then I think I have shown you everything. Let's go back to that key ring and we'll do the motif circle or not the motif circle, blank circle and hit OK. Mm -hmm. Nope. There we go. All right, so we've got our blank circle. Let's do a little spirograph inside because I think that'd be really cute. So here we go. And we'll have to see what size we need. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So we can just go through random. Yes. And we can change this to be smaller. And that one's with the ribbon embroidery. And then, then we'll make our petals smaller. And this smaller. All right, and hit OK. And put it in there. And then we could do the exact same thing and make it a little bigger and put in there. I had a question. Do we always need to start with the in the hoop project or we can or can we just design from just a shape? I for what these purposes are, you would need to start with an in the hoop project because they have all the steps laid out for you on how to do it. So like with the zipper pouch, it, it tells you exactly when to lay the zipper down and when to put the next piece of fabric down and tells you exactly what size zipper, I mean, zipper to use, what size fabric to cut. So if you are starting with the designer on your own, you're going to do all that. Now, if you were doing like here, see here's the book cover instructions, and it's going to tell you where to place the pocket, where to, and the guides, and it's gonna go through each one and tell you where to tape it down, and how to stitch it. So you need to know that if you're doing it in a hoop project because it's all just right there for you and you don't have to go on from there. Let's look at the one for the key ring, or not the key ring, the um, zipper pouch. And I'm gonna go to the vintage sewing machine and I'm gonna view those instructions. This is not gonna show the vintage sewing machine, but it's gonna show you the pouch. And what's convenient about this is the first step, well, it's gonna give you an overall view so you know what to do. And right here on step eight is where you seal it up. So that's why I said before, prior to that, you'd want to show the monograms. And then it tells you what kind of stabilizer you need, what kind of zipper, what your fabric is and your lining. And then it'll stitch the layout lines where you need to put all this. And then you lay the zipper down and you stitch the zipper down. And then where to do the, um, and what I like to on this one, see the A and, and B, it stitches that A and B out. 
on your stabilizer. So you know exactly when it says place material on A, you know which place to put it. And it will tell you exactly how to fold it back, where to put your tape. And I do tape some of these things down. Like I have some tape I bought from my FOF dealer that will adhere your zipper to your stabilizer and it will hold it down. So that's what's great about this. So it, and it'll tell you rut side up. So I think that's what the main advantage of doing all these in the hoop projects are. If you are great at digitizing, you could probably do it. My forte is not that, but I am really enjoy these in the hoop projects because I can go right through them and do them and know exactly what I'm doing. So let's look at the luggage tag instructions real quick and I'll just go to the blank rectangle. So it says you can adjust the size to your liking. And then make, lots of times it gives this helpful hint, like the bobbin thread will be visible from the back. So you might want to match. Um, your borders will have raw edges because you can see it just stitches around it right there. And that's why I use cork, but a vinyl would work. A leather would work, something that didn't ravel. And it exactly tells you where to do the placement lines. And this is where I was talking about the tape. So you can tape it down and then um, just go from there and then it'll, uh, if you wanted to add a little pocket line, which I did not do on mine, you can do that like clear to put your name. So anyway, I think this is an incredible um, feature we have in our MySonet software that you can um, just go through and be so creative because there's just so many choices. And in each choice, there's so many you know, subcategories. Just look at the um, pouches again. There's a camera one the floppy disk, like I said, um, rainbow sewing machine, and you can do a blank. So, and it has several sizes of blanks, so you can do, um, customize them anymore, but you've got the basic foundation there to have all your project created for you. And I think that is all I have today. Sorry about the hiccup inside. Um, I apologize for that, but I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much for watching.